Hey guys, my name is Daniel Rios and I have recently signed a homegrown contract with the Houston Dynamo. Today I'm going to be talking about like my journey to how I got to where I am today. But before that, make sure you guys go subscribe for some good content. I've kind of always like been playing soccer like my whole life because my brothers and sisters and including my dad have all played soccer. So it was kind of in the family already. And it was just kind of, they put it on me too. So I started kind of playing like at the age of four, I officially started playing with like club soccer. It was a small club here in South Side of Houston. And it was, it was just with like this, it was, we used to play in this league that like the, the field were like full of dirt. There was like so much dirt and like the grass was like super thick and like it's kind of funny to think that that's where i started but i mean i, I can never forget where i started you know it's like it's it's something that's made me like very humble and understand that like you know, like everyone has different backgrounds and like no matter where you come from you can always make it out i guess so yeah uh, i played there for like two years and that's where i kind of grew to like soccer my first season was kind of hard because like i really didn't know how to actually play like I just knew how to kick a ball and stuff like that. So my first season, I think I only scored like one goal. And like that whole season, like I used to like play with the dirt and like make little dirt mountains and stuff or like play with the little ants that were on the dirt. It's kind of funny. But um, my second season with that team was kind of a good season for me because uh, I was kind of like, I was like at the, around the time I was like five and I had been training with like my brother a lot. Like he would take me to the field and he would like teach me how to like, how to dribble, how to actually pass the ball, how to shoot and stuff. So that second season, I ended up scoring like 36 goals and I ended up breaking like the record and I won the golden boot, which that was kind of cool. And I, I guess that's kind of where like that love for the game started because like I was actually decent and I actually knew what I was doing. And I don't know, it just felt good to like just win a trophy and like just be recognized, you know? And I was like, kind of when like, I started to like actually love the game. And from there, uh, I decided to switch clubs to a club called Aguiluchos, which was with a coach called Coach Reyes. And I can say that that was a, a great move for me because um, he kind of taught me a lot that I know now. And he like, he made me a player that that like loved to win because he hated losing. And like, I remember when we used to lose, like we would have to run a whole bunch the next time I practice. And I was actually playing up while I was playing with him. Uh, so I was six playing U8. And like when I was like eight, I was playing like U10 and et cetera. So I always played up with him, you know, I had older teammates. So that helped me a lot. That was really good for me because, you know, I was playing against bigger and faster people. So that mean that meant I had to like play quicker. I had to think quicker. Like I was very agile in a way because like I had to get through people a lot and I was always like the smallest guy on the team. So I had to be smarter on the ball. So that helped me a lot. And I feel like that reflects a lot in my game now, even though I've grown like to be like almost everyone's height now. Once I was like eight or nine, I started getting interest from this club called Houstonians which was a pretty good club at the time. It was kind of known here in Houston area and like they had good little background stories. They had been around for a good a good while and like they, there was nothing but good things to be said. So I ended up making the move to go to Houstonians, which I feel was a very good move for me because they had like an idea of how they wanted to play, you know, because like in the past I used to play, like we all we thought about was going forward 
or like uh just make sure that we wouldn't lose but when i got to estonians like they actually talked about like soccer terms like for example like they knew they talked about like switching the ball or like recovering and all that stuff they knew how they wanted to play and they had their own little identity so i feel like that was a big move for me because it just uh helped me develop a lot more and at the time i believe i was like nine i was either eight and a half or nine when i moved to the estonians and that was definitely a good move for me because I've met new teammates uh, and I was able to like kind of start playing more serious soccer and competing in bigger tournaments and getting myself seen. So I ended up only staying with the Estonians for like, I want to say a year, a year and a half because one of my teammates, he was actually trying out for Houston at the time, for the Houston Dynamo Academy. And he talked to the coach and he told him that like, that he had this friend and he was like pretty decent. So uh, they came to see me play, I think at a game. And I ended up scoring like two goals that game. And so the coach talked to my, my friend's dad and he told him like to bring me to like one of the practice cause he wanted me to go try out. So I ended up going. And I remember I was really nervous when I ended up like deciding to go to try out because you know, my whole life I had like played in little clubs or like I had always been the smallest guy and like it was just a very like nerve-wracking feeling for me and I remember I talked to my brother and he told me he was like like if this is what you love like this is the best thing you could ever do because you know they have a pathway and like they have a goal for each and every one of their players and like we want you to go pro they have a pro team like for you in the future so he was like if you like work hard and like you commit to this like this could really work out so I ended up going to try out. They called my brother letting them know that like, you know, like they were down to like keep me and that like they wanted me to join. So uh, we talked as a family and we decided that it was the best move for me to go to the Houston Dynamo Academy if like I wanted a future in soccer. And I can say that it's been like the best decision of my life so far. And I am extremely happy and extremely thankful with the Academy for like everything because that's where I like truly actually developed into the player I am now. So I've been there since I, I was either, I think I was like about to turn 10 when I joined the academy and I've been there ever since. And you know, like there's always been bumps in the road because it's gonna happen. Like no player is gonna have a smooth pathway into the pros. And you know, I went through moments where like for example, uh, I want to say the hardest bump I've had to uh, had in like this pathway has been uh, losing my brother because my brother was like like a father to me. Like my father was always there for me, but my brother was just he was something different, you know. He taught me everything I know. He made me the person I am today, off and on the field, and I'm super thankful for that. But whenever I lost my brother, I had stopped playing for like two months, two to three months, because I just didn't see, I didn't see myself being the same player no more. And I didn't, I felt like there was no purpose in playing no more. And that was really hard for me. And uh, I ended up going to train like two or three months later. And I, I'm happy I did because that same season, uh, my first game back, I ended up scoring against our rivals, FC Dallas. And that was just like a good moment. Like I felt like the same player again. And I knew that I was ready to get back on the field. Um, it was definitely hard. I remember before the game, I, I prayed and I started like crying because it just wasn't the same no more. Like I wasn't playing knowing that my brother was next to me on the field or like telling me what to do or telling me how I did after the game. So it was a very hard moment in my life. I was kind of lost and confused, but I'm happy to say that I ended up finding a way to like use that as a motivation and as something to push me every single day. And it's been a wild ride, but I mean, I know that hopefully my brother's up there and he's proud and you know, and he's excited with everything that's going on right now because we used to talk about it all the time that, you know, like I'm gonna go pro one day, I'm gonna play in the World Cup one day. So these are all goals that we had and, you know, I've been able to accomplish at least goal one. It definitely hasn't been easy. Like I've had to gone through the process where like I started in the bench and like I have to find my way to get on the field. But uh, an advice that I can give for any young player or anyone that's just trying to be pro or like get on the field is, 
you just have to be a coachable player and like you have to be able to like learn from your mistakes because the reason you're not on the field is because probably the coach doesn't feel like you're the player that's going to make an impact on the field and like whoever he's playing over you is probably making an impact on the field so you like have to communicate with your coach like ask him like what do i have to do to get on the field because at the end of the day it's the coach's decision no matter how good you think you are you know you always have to humble yourself and come down and like ask your coach like hey like what can i do to improve even if you are starting you know just ask your coach like what can i do to get even better and i feel like that's something that i had to do at times and uh, I mean, it is what it is, you know, sometimes you're not always going to start and you have to learn from it and you have to make sure that you take your defeats the same way you take your, your dubs, you know, because you're not always going to win and you have to learn to understand that you're losing for a reason and you have to fix that reason. And I, I, that's probably like one of the biggest advice I can give you. And just uh, just make sure that you stay confident, you know, you understand that that you're the, where you're at for a reason and you have to value yourself as a player, you know, like you can't settle for less, you know, even if you're good enough, you want to push yourself to be even better. Let's say you're good at something like, like I'm good at, like, I think I'm pretty good at dribbling. Like, you know, there's always room for improvement. You can start like dribbling around, like with cones, like even in your backyard or anything, or I consider myself pretty good at shooting. You can always get better at shooting with your right, shooting with your left, like make sure you're shooting with your weak foot also or like winning your duels in the air, you know, that's something that I feel like I should improve. And so like, there's always room for improvement. And that's something that you have to understand that you have to do like no matter what, because sometimes you might think like you're good enough at something, but the coach might feel like someone else is better than you at it. So you have to push yourself to make sure that you're the best at it every single day. And I feel like the academy has helped me with that a lot. Like we've been training like this past season, we trained twice a day. And like even then, like sometimes in between practices, the two practices that I would talk to our our technical coach and I would like tell him like, what do you feel like I should improve on? Or how can I improve technically? How can I improve defensively? And like we used to stay and work for like an extra hour, you know, it's stuff like that. The little things that like really push you to become a better player. And, and it's something that you need to have like for sure if you like trying to go pro because, you know, it's those little things that are gonna just make you a little bit better. Like it's not always gonna be like a lot better, you know, but like it pushes you to be a little bit better. And, you know, like sometimes you have to do them. I mean, they might suck because you might not wanna do them or you don't like doing certain things, but you have to do what you have to do because you have to make sure that you're a complete player in order to like, to like wanna be a pro because everyone in the pro level is older, bigger, stronger. So like you have to make sure that every little small detail you have is something that can help you to be able to beat a bigger guy, be able to be a stronger guy, you know? So that's something that for sure you, like younger guys have to like keep in mind and just stay humble, man. Because, you know, like me, like I don't come from a big, like a big rich family, you know? Uh, I'm actually the baby of nine and we've always been just like financially stable enough to like move on in life. And I can say that my one of my biggest motivation was always to like help my dad to not be able to work as much because he's been working nonstop his whole life like whenever it was my younger my uh, older siblings were younger like he would work two jobs and he would only see them like at night and most of the time the, my brothers and sisters were sleeping so you know my dad has had to sacrifice a lot and i just want to be able to like give a tiny amount back you know because i can never repay him for everything that they've done for me or nothing but you know i just want to be able to like have him relax and live his life and enjoy himself, you know, take him on trips and stuff. So another thing that I can tell you guys is just every day, man, even when it's hard, you know, some days you're gonna be lazy or be super tired, like just push yourself because you never know, someone else could be working as hard as you. And like me, I feel like that was something that helped me a lot. Like I just realized that you gotta love the grind. If you don't love the grind, like things don't happen for you like one like this past year i like i i can say that i like fully feel like i've I, I don't think i put in my all because you know there's there were some days that i was i was tired i was lazy but i feel like i actually like put a good amount of work in and like i was able to go to like a national team camp and i feel like that was a very uh good experience because it was my first camp and i was able to like play with kids that are already pro or like kids that were like fighting in the same position as me like to like become a pro so 
it was a very humbling and good experience, you know, for me. And I feel like that kind of, uh, like, it kind of woke me up that like, you know, there's kids that are my age already that are pros or like about to sign contracts. So it like made me, it gave me that extra push to like want it, want it more, you know? And like, it just kind of like motivated me to like, to think that like, if they can do it, why can't I do it? And it was a good awakening for me, I feel. And it's just, I'm, I'm really thankful for the opportunity that I had to go to our national team camp. And I feel like it's only the start, you know, it was only my first camp. I was able to score a goal in one of the games we played at the camp, which was really fun. It was a good moment. Uh, I remember it was a pretty good celebration too. Last year, it's like when I started kind of like going into first team. So I've been going in for like a good, good while now. It's been like a year and a half where I've been going in constantly. But this past season, I was able to like go to preseason with them and everything. And I just feel like it was really good for me mentally and physically because mentally it shows you, it like shows you how uh, a pro is supposed to act and how they behave and everything. So I feel like it was a good, a good way for like me to see like a day-to-day -day life of a pro. And you just realize that like the speed of play at the pro level is so much faster. The passes are so much more firmer. And you just, you realize that you like, you have to be quicker and like be smarter. So I feel like that helped me a lot when I would come back down and like play play my age with the U17s or even play with the 19s because, you know, I just, I had the little extra gear because of like all the time that I've been spending with the first team. It's kind of special to me because like I wasn't born in like the nicest area. I never had the nicest things, but I always fought for what I had, you know? So it's a very good moment for my family and I because you know, it's just something that that kind of helps us settle down and like financially and everything. So I'm very excited, you know, and I'm happy for to be able to help my family and to be able to help myself, you know, and uh, I'm like, I'm really excited to just be like someone positive for the community because, you know, throughout all the stereotypes, I was able to beat them out and I am where I am today and I'm very excited and humbled and I'm just ready to get to work and I'm super excited. So thank you.